Hi, Phil Chandler here. Today we're going to set up a horizontal hive, which I made a number of years ago. It's this one here. Um, it's a bit shaky. It's uh, not in great condition, but it's usable uh, and it'll certainly last us this season. And so the purpose of this hive is going to be to uh, build top bars so that we can populate the remainder of these hives here. Uh, the one down there is populated and there's um, scouts taking a strong interest in the second one along, uh, sorry, the third one along from that end, but the rest are, are currently empty. So we're gonna do several things to remedy that. One is this hive here that you're looking at now, this poly hive is going to be shaken into this uh, top bar hive. And then this poly hive here, or it's, it's a poly nuke with, with a couple of extenders on it, this one is going to form the population of the um, horizontal hive. And Leon's here gonna help me. This pile of stuff here is the insulation that we're going to add to the outside of this hive because it's only made of rather thin wood and uh, that's gonna help keep the bees cozy. So if we can now take a look inside, uh, we, we can see what has to be done. Right, so as you can see, this is this has been built uh, to take deep frames, deep national frames, 10, uh, 14 by 12s, whereas we're going to be using standard national frames, which are considerably shorter. So this gives us an opportunity to uh, test out the eco floor once more. And you'll see that the bottom of this hive currently is a, um, it's a plastic mesh, in fact. It's been there for some time. I hope it's still strong enough. We're going to fill the bottom of this with um, oak chips from over there, uh, from this oak tree. And that's going to form the, the eco floor underneath the, the set of frames. We're going to take all the bees from this hive and put them into here. And we're going to take all the brood from the other hive and put that into here as well. So it's going to have a significant population of bees in this, in this hive. Uh, we're going to put insulation, as I said, on the outside, which in these in these hollow set bits on the outside here, and we're also going to put uh, reflectix, which is the shiny stuff you can see over there, uh, on the top of the frames uh, to help keep the bees warm. So, although it's not a particularly warm day today, in fact, I would say it's unseasonably cool for May. Um, we're hoping that we can keep the bees reasonably cosy throughout this process, and that they will be able to raise the temperature inside the hive quite easily after we've gone because it, they're going to be well insulated. So there we go, that's what we're going to do and uh, let's see how it turns out. So here we are again, we're back with the, uh, the horizontal hive and we have applied some insulation um, and we have taped it up with aluminium tape so it all looks nice and shiny now. Uh, and much cosier than it did before. I mean, it still looks a bit rough in places, but you'll have to forgive us that. Um, but inside here, we've got uh, our oak chips. This is our eco floor material. And amongst this um, is all sorts of lovely juicy mycelium and who knows what little bugs living in there. And we're hoping that this is going to enhance the interior environment for our bees and um, something else that, that that did occur to us while we were doing this was that um, the, de the the process of decomposition of course anyone that's run a compost heap will know this uh, the process of de decomposition does um, is, is what they call exothermic it does give off heat and that hopefully will help to keep the bees warm um, we don't know of course whether it's going to be potentially too much heat, which is again something we ought to, we really ought to put some sensors in here and measure this. Maybe I'll bring a thermometer next time and we'll pop it in there and see if it is actually having that effect. Um, there's an empty frame in here which just gives us a, 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 a gauge to measure the depth of the, um, the cavity above the floor. Obviously we want a gap um, under the frames. Um, but we've otherwise got nothing else here to stop the bees just walking around on those oak chips as they please. And we will obviously make some observations as to whether they in fact do that or not. So uh, all that remains is for us to make a couple of entrances, which we will do with a, a drill. And uh, 
then we can start putting bees inside. The next part of this process requires us to put the long hive in place of this polynuke right here. Uh, because what we want to do, of course, is to take advantage of the fact that the bees are orientated to this spot and all the flying bees that are out at the moment will continue to come back to this particular uh, point in space. So we want to put our entrance uh, as close to that spot as is reasonable. And that means that we've got to pick this up and move it, which is not a problem. And then we'll put that hive in place of this one, and that will be the location for that hive, uh, certainly for the duration of this season. So that's the next stage, and we're going to dismantle this hive uh, carefully, of course. We're going to look for the state of it in terms of uh, food supplies, in terms of the brood, uh, check that the queen's laying well, which I'm pretty sure she is, and then we're going to transfer everything in these three boxes, except for any old comb, any, any comb that's really beyond use. Um, we'll leave out and we can replace that with new frames. Or, But we're also, remember, going to take brood out of this other hive and add that to the mix. So uh, we're going to do two operations in one here. Uh, one is to uh, transfer a vertical polynuke arrangement into a horizontal hive. And the other is to transfer the bees in this polynuke into this stock bar hive and at the same time we're going to take their brood and add them to this colony in the long hive. The reason for doing that of course is that we can't put frames directly into the top bar hive so we're going to have to force these bees to start again from scratch which is going to be a bit of a shock to them and we're going to have to compensate them to some extent by um, feeding them but it's a good strong colony they should have no trouble from starting again and um, hopefully all go well. So that's the next thing we're going to do. Uh, so what we're seeing here is bees already coming back from foraging, finding a completely different hive in place. Now, one thing we might have to change here, we've got entrances uh, in the side, and in fact the bees are coming back to these holes in the ends, thinking that they're the entrance, and in fact they're not. So um, we may have to do some uh, uh, adjustment to that, but for the time being, we're going to pursue our goal of transferring frames from here. Perhaps if you could use the, the, the tool and I'll lift. That's it now. That's yuck. This is a really horrible frame which we're going to discard for sure. So I'm going to shake the bees off it. And we won't be using that one again. The bees are pretty well tempered, but I'm probably I might be taking it a bit for granted. Yeah, again, if you could shake the bees off that straight into the hive would be good. <laughs> Um, there's honey on this frame, so I am going to put that one directly into the hive, although it's a pretty uh, rough old frame. There's a little bit of honey on this, I'm just going to put that one in. On this side you can see there's a lot of brood, so I'm going to leave that frame in there. And I'm also going to put a, a veil on. Okay, uh, you can see we've got a lot of bees all trying to <laughs> figure out where their home is now. Uh, that will settle down and uh, there's a lot of bees inside the hive. They're not quite sure what they're doing yet, but um, given a little time and a bit of patience, they'll be fine. I know it looks like a mess at the moment, but it won't for much longer. Meanwhile, the hive is being steadily dismantled and there's a lot of daggy old comb in here, which really needs to go. So. 
uh, we, we are taking the opportunity of renewing the comb in this hive at the same time. Okay, and there's not really much going on on that comb at all, is there? It's old and it's yeah, well past its uh, use-by date. Shake them off into the hive and discard the old comb. We're going to put a solar wax melter in this apiary as well because it's quite a sunny spot and that will help us uh, dispose of old comb uh, of which we have plenty. All good. The bees are learning about their new home. I'm just going to pick a few up and just put them onto their comb because that's just where they're going to have to end up. So we're going to put, uh, we've got rid of most of the old comb. It's all pretty old stuff, not nice at all. We're giving them some new, fresh new foundation strips because um, I, I practically never use full, full sheets of foundation these days. I just like them to build their own comb. There's lots of food coming in. Uh, nevertheless, I think we probably will give them some food as well, uh -huh. just to supplement that. Um, and these bees will sort themselves out in time, but um, I'm just going to help them along a little bit by making sure that they get to know where their comb is now. Uh, nice tempered bees, which is always, a, always good to work with. Okay, so we're going swimmingly. Now we're going to t tackle this hive here because now we're, what we're going to do with this lot is we're going to shake the bees into this top bar hive, which is right here, ready for them. Here's the top bar hive. It's got an eco floor in place. And so we're going to shake all the bees from that hive directly into here. And then we're going to give the brood, uh, whatever state that's in, to the other hive to look after. So that's our next operation. Now these bees have made a nice lot of comb in the feeder, which is really not what they're supposed to be doing, but yeah, drop that down there somewhere. Uh, not only are they storing food up here or trying to, that they've also got some brood going on up here. So the queen has been upstairs. Um, th this feeder is actually, I've adapted it, uh, as you may have seen in another video, uh, that I actually made a, uh, an access hole directly down into the, into the hive through the floor of the, um, of the, of the uh, feeder because I wanted to be able to use this side for solid feeding, so for fondant, and this side for liquid feeding. But somehow they've managed to figure out a way of foiling my designs and they've managed to use the whole thing to build comb in. But there's, that's bees for you, isn't it? I'm just gonna get my hive tool. Uh, incidentally, this hive, this is the, the best hive tool that I've, um, that I've found so far for this kind of work. It's, uh, as you can tell, it's um, decorator's knife multi-purpose and I've, I've sharpened the edges a little bit to make it a better scraper but these things are um, very very tough they're very cheap and they actually make very good hive tools so uh, worth checking out there's a lot of bees in here which is great I can't uh, shoot this one-handed uh, and, and as well as lifting frames out so my my uh, Apprentice. My lovely assistant here, <laughs> Liam, is going to do that bit for me. And uh, you can see he's a deft hand with the J tool. Okay. And what have we got here? So we've got a lot of drone brood over here. And uh, I can't see eggs. Can you see eggs in there? My Your eyesight's probably better than mine. Yes, there's eggs in there. There's eggs in there, okay. Yeah, you've got All right. Eggs and larvae there. Okay. So we're going to shake these bees off into the top bar hive and then the, the, the brood is going into the other hive. Because we can't put uh, we can't put brood into the top bar hive for obvious reasons. So all the brood's going to go into this hive. This is going to become a nursery. It will uh, 
it will help them build up their numbers quickly. We do have a, a, an opportunity here, if we choose to take it, um, of reducing the varroa load by um, uh, what you might call biomechanical means. Um, so we could, for example, um, discard drone brood. If we come across frames that are mostly drone brood, we might, uh, we might dis discard them to get rid of uh, some varroa mites. Okay, these look okay. Uh, there's some brood on there, but not a huge amount. Can you see eggs in the empty cells? Yes. Okay, so that could potentially go in the other one. Let's have a look at the other side. Um, similarly, um, okay, so yes, so same again, shake the bees, brood goes in the other hive. So same story, lots of brood on here, some open, some sealed. Um, I am keeping an eye out for the queen. This is a good strong colony, nice tempered bees, um, local mongrels, they're not anything special, they're not black bees or anything in particular, they're just um, what we have. Now this, this little bit of confusion behind me here is returning, bees returning to this hive. Well, Phil, do you want to record this? All the bees are making their way up, so the queen's obviously in the hive. See how Okay, right. So these bees here, you can see are marching quite strongly towards this end of the hive. So they've, uh, we, ha we have to assume that they've identified this area here as being where their queen lives. So I'm just looking to see if she happens to be visible at the moment on the top, but uh, I don't see her. But there are, there's a lot of fanning going along. And the bees are all walking strongly in this direction. So we have to assume that the queen's in here, which is always good news. We'd like to know where our queens are. We're going to have to cover this hive up, of course, because it's, uh, um, we need to retain the heat. Uh, and also, um, the bees don't necessarily like to be exposed like this. So we will put some reflectics over this hive in a moment. <laughs> All looking good. So there's lots of worker brood on here, uh, so that can go straight into the other hive. Okay, now at this point we've got a lot of returning bees, and we would like them to go into the top bar hive rather than this hive, ideally. So what we're going to do next is we're going to move uh, this hive aside, and we're going to put the top bar hive uh, facing in the same direction as this hive, with the entrance more or less where this one is now, and that will encourage the uh, foraging bees to return to where we want them to. Okay, so what we've done here is we've repositioned the top bar hive so that it's closer to uh, where the other hive was a minute ago. And that will help them find the entrance, we hope. Okay, so we've now got, we're down to the first box, the bottom box of the polynuke and we're going to continue the process. So you can see now that the bees that are coming, returning from their foraging have located pretty much the, their new home and in, in the fullness of time they will find their way into that entrance down there. How are we doing? Looking good. So we found the queen, whoops, there she is right there. There she is walking around. So we're going to, um, if you can walk that over to the hive, we'll put her in a bit carefully. Here's our queen. I'm just going to get behind her. Here we go. Right, there's the queen. I'm just going to pop her into the hive with the other bees just so that she's safe. We know she's in there. Okay, carry on shaking bees in there. And let's put some more bars over so that we make this a bit dark. If you're 
gentle and slow with uh, top bars you can generally get the bees to more or less do what you want which is to get down between the bars there we go and then we can close oops then we can close up without squashing bees hopefully so what we're trying to do now is to create a nice dark space because that's what they're used to that's what they like and very gently and just nudge the bees aside and we can place bars over okay so there's some more coming Now, of course, because this is a shook swarm, we we are expecting the bees to start from a clean sh a clean sheet. Yes, uh, for, start start from scratch. Um, they've got to recreate their home now. They've got to build comb, and they've got to look after their queen, and they've got to do everything as if they were a swarm. So we will feed them on this occasion because otherwise uh, we're in danger of uh, putting them into a state of starvation, which is, of course is never good. Now at this point I'm going to cut a piece of reflectix to go over this, these four frames because these bees are in danger of getting too cool. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so we've got a lot of flying bees coming back now to the location of the top bar hive. Most of them are actually coming onto the roof because they're not quite sure where the entrance is yet. But that will be remedied in due course. I'm interested that there are so many drones amongst this crowd. Uh, because we haven't found any signs that they were uh, rearing queens or anything like that, which is when you expect to see a lot of drone activity around a hive. The bees that we've shaken in are behaving quite peaceably. Uh, they will now, I'm sure, form a, a cluster. Uh, we're just going to close this off a little bit. Uh, we got all the bees in now, pretty much. Um, yeah, it's just a few stragglers left. I'll okay. Have Okay, so this is, um, if you like, a, a, a bit of a brutal way of um, populating a top bar hive. It's not my favourite. My favourite is, is simply to house a swarm. Um, but nevertheless, the situation that we had was um, a colony in a, uh, an established polynuke, but the, the, the frames were in bad condition, the comb was in bad condition, and it was important to get them into a new hive. We had some empty top bar hives here, and we wanted to populate them, so the two things came together nicely. Now, what we've got to do, of course, is to make sure that these bees are looked after, and, um, and fed, and given the resources they need in order to recreate their home. got bees in my trousers stinging oh, me. No. <laughs> Serves me right, I didn't tuck my trousers into my socks. We will of course be adding insulation to this hive on tops of the frames in due course. But the first priority is to get the bees in, get them settled and uh, give them some food. What we want to do now is just to close the hive up uh, and let the bees settle and we could, we've left a couple of gaps we just want to get the bees off the uh, off the wo woodwork we want to get these this lot into the air so they've got another chance to go looking for the entrance so that's what we're doing now and you can see there's loads of bees at the front and they are starting to find the entrance down here now I'm going to make another grass brush and brush the bees off the face of this hive because we want them to go down there and find the proper entrance to keep things running smoothly. It takes bees a little while to get used to a new hive, a new home, but they will. So we've uh, completed the operation pretty much. Uh, I've got some reflectix on the top of this hive to keep them help keep them cozy. Of course the, the roof is also going back in a moment. These bees are a bit confused. They're, they're kind of figuring out where the entrance 
it should be to this new box. Um, we're going to um, we're going to have another crack at aerializing them and uh, helping them to find the entrance. Actually, I'm going to take this cork out just to make it temporarily larger. I'll give them another chance of finding it. Um, there will be bees inside and there will be some fanning going on, uh, if not now, then very soon. And that will certainly help them find their new entrance. At the moment there's quite a lot of confusion. Um, this hive over here, um, the bees will settle down. There's an entrance, two entrance holes this side and actually two entrance holes the other side. And between them they'll figure out which ones they're going to use and we'll close up the other ones. I suspect they'll mostly use the ones on this side because that's closest to where the original entrance was, but uh, we'll see how that goes. The, the bees in the top bar hive uh, will need feeding, which we're gonna do shortly. And uh, that will give them the resources to build uh, some new comb because they've obviously got to re rebuild that now. Uh, but I think it must be quite a relief for them not to have to deal with all that manky old comb which we've taken out, um, which, which is over here, some of which has a bits of brood on, but uh, that getting rid of that comb will relieve them of some of the, uh, the mite burden. So that's pretty much job done. Uh, we've got a little bit of tidying up to do, um, but that's the, uh, that's the operation for today. So two polynukes into two uh, hives, one a top bar, one a horizontal, the horizontal hive we're going to be using to build uh, fresh top bar combs um, and we'll do, deal with that in another video. Uh, for the moment we just want them to settle and uh, settle into their new home so we're not going to give them any extra work to do right now. So that's it for the time being and uh, thanks to my able assistant Liam for his work <laughs> and uh, we'll see you again in another video.